Hello, hello to everybody. Uh, hello from uh, winter, cold winter Ukraine. <laughs> uh, today we have really cold weather. I think about minus probably minus 20, 10, minus 15. And uh, it's really, really <laughs> like cold. <laughs> So uh, today we are going to talk about uh, Ukrainian state building in time of Cossack. Uh, one of the main uh, subjects, main, one of the, ma uh, the main men who created this Cossack state was Ivan Mazepa. This is his portrait. He was a really educated person and he understand that uh, we need not just fight, not just make revolution, but also build society. That is why he built so many uh, building um, churches over Ukraine and in Kiev. I will um, show you some of them uh, later. Uh, hello, hello, who watch me? Uh, so he was a really, really great man. After Bogdan Melnitsky, he um, was the person who built, uh, really built Ukrainian, Ukrainian peaceful. <laughs> he lived in the time when it was more peaceful than before. And I would like to present to you this lovely woman. She is historian who is Russian historian, actually. Her root, uh, roots are from Ukraine, but she had it uh, Ukrainian uh, um, cathedra, Ukrainian department, uh, Ukrainian historical department in St. Petersburg University. Her name is Tatyana Tairova Yakovleva. She published some book about Cossacks and also she often visit Ukraine. Uh, she make research about Cossacks, but not research that um, Russian used to. Uh, she really like Ukraine and she tried to um, present uh, how it's really well, uh, in what way we're going relation between Ukraine and Russia in that time. If you see Ukraine that time, uh, I can compare it with uh, nowadays. Uh, you know, that's uh, five years ago, I think it's already was seven years ago, in 2013 we had uh, Maidan, your Maidan revolution when society were against pro-Russian president Yanukovych and from there started uh, started war between Ukraine and Russia. Uh, so uprising of Bogdan Khmelnytsky uh, it was like uh, Maidan I know as revolution nowadays and we can compare history and nowadays. Uh, if you listen to my previous video, I talk you about uh, Cossacks, Cossacks who live in the Zaporizhia region, who live in the Zaporizhia city, and they were like forehead mm -hmm. of um, Ukrainian fighting. Uh, they always fight. Uh, they had no peaceful time. The same was on Maidan. There were many people who came there over from Ukraine and they stay on barricades. They fought for Ukrainian independence, for Ukrainian uprising, uh, independence uh, from the Russia. There were many revolutionaries men who was ready to fight and many of them uh, later came for the war uh, with Russia. But uh, um, uh, we need not only fight, we need also build, build our state. Uh, so after Maidan, when war started, nevertheless, um, Ukrainian President Petro Poroshenko, now, now Zelensky, they 
try to build something, they try to make some peaceful agreement with Russia, yeah. I think the same was in that time, uh, because uh, Khmelnytsky, uh, after the Khmelnytsky, there were many Getman, many uh, men tried to head the Ukrainian society, but um, it's happened that uh, there were so many um, men who wanted to head it this uh, this day that they try uh, they started to fight each other. That is why that period, the end of uh, 17th century, is called ruin in uh, in Ukraine. Uh, some um, hetman were supported by Poland, some were supported by Russia, and it was really very bad time for Ukraine when society were disconnected. When you know that Ukraine is divided by Dnieper River into the left bank and the right bank, so on the right bank was separate state, on the left bank and also separate state. So one part support Poland, one part support uh, Russia. In 1687, uh, the headman of uh, the Latin Bank was um, elected uh, Mazepa, Ivan Mazepa. He was a really nice and educated man. I can, uh, here you can see uh, his village, Mazepinci. This village is about uh, 100 kilometers, uh, uh, 80 kilometers from Kiev, near the big city, Bila Tserkva. And now it's uh, very well um, ki kept by people, by government, because, uh, of course, uh, Hetman, our president, <laughs> former president, was uh, born here in this village. You can see here a lovely Ukrainian church. Uh, so Ivan Mazepa was born in the family, in the mixed family. His mother was from a Cossack family and his father was from a Lithuanian, Lithuanian family, Mazepa. Mazepa actually it's like Lithuanian um, surname. Uh, his uh, grandfather from, from the mother's side, Cossacks, he fought alongside Bogdan Khmelnytsky. He supported Bogdan Khmelnytsky. He was Cossack, actually. Ivan Mazepa, he got a very good education in uh, Kiev Mogila Academy, actually the university where I studied also. <laughs> it survived during the old the time. This is the oldest university in Eastern Europe, as I told before. Uh, you can see the old part of um, Kiev Mogila Academy here. Uh, after, after the wild, he uh, went abroad. He went to Western Europe. He traveled there. He studied Dara in Dutch Republic. After the while, he served at the court of the Polish king. Uh, his life was interesting Dara. He had some love affair <laughs> with Polish, uh, Polish Mademoiselle Daros. He was a really handsome man. He attracted many women in that time. Uh, but uh, when he came back here to Ukraine, he was um, um, he tried to be uh, to go inside of the top of Ukrainian society. Uh, he tried to incorporate it, to be incorporated into the um, hetman life. Yeah, so uh, that is why he married uh, all the woman. Uh, she was the member of the Hetman family uh, and it was arranged marriage but nevertheless um, he always remained the true true to his wife uh, and uh, he lived uh, together with her till her died she, till her death so, um, and what I'd like to tell you about Ukrainian women of that time. In that time, Ukrainian women were really very educated. Uh, here you can see mother of uh, Ivan Mazepa, a 
as I told, she was from the Cossacks family. In the time when her son had a Ukrainian stage, state, she had it, uh, two monasteries in Kiev. One of these monasteries was really rich and it was famous. Its place was placed near the Lavra Monastery. Uh, in that time, in the Cossack time, Cossacks made everything, Ivan Mazepa made everything for uh, see Ukrainians in um, educative. Every boy, every girl uh, finish uh, primary school. Prim uh, you can uh, see primary school in every village. Uh, in the time, in the time of Cossacks, they provide education in uh, Ukrainian language. And if you go to university, you can also learn the Polish language and Latin. <laughs> So Ivan Mazepa, that is why Ivan Mazepa started in Kiev Mogil Academy and it was uh, really, really nice for him. And what I would like to tell about Ivan Mazepa, uh, from the beginning he was supported by the Russian Tsar. First he became the headman of the left bank and he was supported by Russia, but after the wild he uh, also um, incorporated right bank into the uh, into the left bank here yeah, and created uh, you you um, and united Ukraine. So he it was really great uh, because he united left bank and the right bank after the period of ruina. Uh, Ivan Mazepa from the beginning have, had very good relation with Peter the Great. He supported Peter the Great. Uh, in that time Russia had war with Sweden. Uh, there was uh, the, the big war, the northern uh, um, war in Europe, when uh, such a uh, state as uh, Sweden fought against Russia and also fought against um, some Prussian, Prussian, Prussian kings. Uh, so Russia wanted to have some land uh, in the modern Estonia, Latvia in the north. It was like um, the border with uh, Sweden. Uh, that is why many Cossacks took part in this war. They were sent abroad, uh, they were, uh, were fought Tara. When, Ukraine, uh, when a Swedish king came to the Poland and after he... Um, after, actually, um, Polish king was defeated and uh, Swedish king Karl XII came to Ukraine. Uh, Peter the Great wanted to see Mazepa uh, fought for his idea. He wanted uh, Mazepa together with Cossack uh, fight uh, with Swedish army. But Cossacks had no good support here in Ukraine. And I don't know how it's happened, but uh, Ivan Mazepa turned to the side of Swedish King Karl XII. Uh, so, uh, probably you know uh, Pushkin, who wrote the poem Poltava Battle, Polta Poltavska Bitva. There was the great battle between the Russian uh, militarist and also Swedish uh, army uh, near the Poltava, the region regional town of uh, city of Ukraine, and Peter the Great won this battle. That is why it was uh, the tragedy for, uh, for Ivan Mazepa, because he supported Swedish king and he ran away together with Karl XII to Moldavia, to Ottoman Empire and after to Sweden. Uh, and he had no good support here. So Ivan Mazepa died in Bandari, um, 
Today, this is um, Pridnipruvia, uh, the state between uh, Turkey and Moldavia. Nevertheless, he um, between Poltava battle and between his uh, when he became uh, hetman, the head of Ukraine. It was the long period. He did everything for um, Ukrainian state for Ukrainian history, for Ukrainian culture. For example, here you can see some building that Ivan Mazepa made. First of all, it was a building of Kiyomogila Academy. Now this is the oldest building of this university. Uh, inside of this building now is uh, the old library and you can see many portraits of Ukrainian hetman there. Uh, also he created uh, the great bell tower near St. Sophia. Uh, if you were in Kiev you can go to St. Sophia and uh, uh, on the entrance you will see this gorgeous bell tower in Baroque style. This uh, church of the old saint in uh, Lavra Monastery. This is gate church. There is the gate inside. It's lovely church that's built in the Baroque style. In that time, it was very popular Baroque when it came from Italy to here. So many churches were built in that time by Kozak, by Ivan Mazeba. And uh, hospital. Uh, hospital church it was hospital uh, nearby church uh, also this church is a place in lover monastery and built by ivan mazepa uh, together with peter the great he built key fortress uh, and the main the center of this fortress was around lover here the fortress Walls around Laura. This is my bird. <laughs> so this fortress was built against uh, Karl the Twelve against uh, Swedish army, but Swedish army came not to Kiev to Poltava. Karl the Twelve knew that uh, they built here some kind of fortress. The period of Mazepa and the next period. Um, in, it was time when Ukraine was incorporated into the Russian Empire. Uh, in that time Russia was um, on the background of Europe. Uh, Russia had no even university. If we had Kiyomgil Academy for already 100 years, they had no university. And many professors, many students from Kiyomogil Academy from Ukraine came to Russia and they established their and university and even primary school. One of uh, this Ukrainian primary school was established in Arkhangelsk Arhang uh, region. This school started uh, Lomonosov, uh, the great famous Russian uh, uh, scientists. Uh, after Lomonosov also was one of the founder of Moscow University. Uh, so uh, it's it's look like Russian Empire was created also by Ukrainian and uh, Russian historian Tatyana Tyrova Yakovleva tell that uh, really you incorporation of Ukraine into the uh, Russia had uh, the big um, uh, the big value for creation of the Russian Empire uh, many uh, professors many priests many bishops were Ukrainian who live in Russia uh, unfortunately uh, Many rich uh, Ukrainian family they didn't support Mazepa in his uh, idea to build independence Ukrainian state and they uh, support Russia they uh, see themselves inside of the Ru Russia. Uh, 
uh, that is why slowly slowly Ukraine was incorporated into the state um, and if uh, 18th century it was magnificent period it was period of education it was period of the Ukrainian uprising the next century 19th century it was totalitarian I think <laughs> time when the Ukrainian language was forbidden when uh, you uh, it was forbidden to uh, print Ukrainian book and so and so on I hope I told you everything that I was going to about Ivan Mazepa and now you knew about this great leader of uh, Cossack state of the 18th century. I wish you have a good day, have a nice uh, weekend. Uh, tomorrow we are going to have a weekend and see you. See you next time with my new topic.